In Affinity Photo, you can use bitmap fills in all kinds of ways. I'm just using a fill layer that I've just created with a bitmap. So you can see the options here, lots and lots of them along here. But how to start with, let's just create a completely fresh document. I'm just going to create a triangle, very basic triangle. And so here's a triangle. I can now export it. I can also save it. But unfortunately, for some weird reason, Affinity Photo does not accept into its bitmap fill its own format, which seems to be a massive oversight. Also, it doesn't accept PSDs, etc. So go over to File and then down to Export. And I've got this selected at the moment. So this object is selected. Now you of course could create much more complex designs than this. And you can see now I've got PSD. I don't want that one. I want PNG. Now JPEG, possible, but PNG I think is a perfect reasonable for, format. So okay, selection area, that's the key thing. Unless of course you want the whole document, which is reasonable as well. But I'm just going for this, the selection. And now export. And I'm saving it to my desktop. And I've already got a PNG already there, so replace. And now it can be used as a bitmap fill. So let's just remove that. And let's just create a layer. Now you can do it in a couple of ways. So I'm just going to go with the layer option. So layer and new fill layer. When you get that, you get something like this, of course, depending on the color. And you can drag and you can see along here, you've got the option here of the gradient tool selected. And you've got here linear elliptical, radial, conical, and at the bottom, you've got bitmap. So select bitmap. Then it will offer an option to select a file. Now you can see these ones, the PSD, not available. Baffling, should be acceptable. TIFFs, etc. maybe TIFF is, I don't know, but certainly the Affinity one isn't. So triangle, PNG, click open. There's probably a logical reason for it not to be selected, but still, I think it should be. But still, what you can do, you can then resize this and you can see you can do all kinds of things you can just rotate it just rotate it around like that you can resize it and at the moment it's scaling and the reason here it's locked here maintain fill aspect ratio you can deselect that if you want so if you want just go up here click here now it's turned off what you can do just go here and you can see now you can drag this and you can drag this the other way so you can create some very intense sharp edge effects and also you can still move this around so maybe move that down and drag this one up to make it even more intense now you can see it's slightly degrading i mean obviously it's a small file you can stretch it only so far but you get something like this and you can of course continue to move it around you can also go up here there's an option for rotate gradient which personally it's not mega useful but it's still useful if you want to turn them around i guess if you've got multiple layers you want them at different angles obviously 90 degrees 180 etc now of course you can just simply rotate it like that now you can hold down the shift you can see it just locks there every time you go around which just is good i think personally what you can also do you've got option here and reset transform so if you want click reset transform which results in that which is not brilliant but you get this back okay then you can drag that around but what you can also do you can see you've also got other options as well so you've got here extend you've got wrap so wrap is this one so you've just got them repeated all the way across you got mirror which obviously just duplicates that and mirrors it which is quite nice it's a real nice effect. Now, if you add anything like drop shadow, etc., into it, you end up with getting a bit of a gap there because it defines the size of that pattern tile slightly different. But here, it just matched it very nicely like this. So you get a lovely diamond effect very quickly. And again, you can just change this and move this around, do all the same things using mirror. And that's a useful option. You've also got some other ones here, so you can just try them out personally. I think unless you're really looking at it very, very close, I couldn't tell the difference. To me, visually anyway, looks good. Printed off, you might have different opinions. What you can do, repeat. Now, repeat is a weird one. You get that, which is odd. You sort of get extended from the central 
point. I think it's just a really weird one, that one. But still, I guess there's some uses for it. Not certain how many uses, but there is probably something there for. And also zero, which you reduce it down to the actual object itself, which you can move around, I guess, for placement. It's exactly the same as basically having it as a layer, isn't it? This design is a layer. I wish they would add some more. I mean, surely they could think of a few more like brick fill ones, symmetrical fill ones, sort of spiral circle ones. Lots of applications have got different options for these sort of fills. I can't see any reason why they couldn't have a random color fill or random manipulation where it generates multiple shapes across the image, different sizes, those sort of things. Please put in the comments below if you can think of some that you would love to see. I know I certainly would love to see the randomised size feature or rotation option as well. Lots of different possible pattern layers that they could generate. Okay, so we've got this. And now, again, you can just continue with this. And I'm just going to put it back to the first one. Wrap. So wrap. And of course, what you can do is just a layer. You can always come over here and you can, you've got this, you can duplicate it. So right click and just go down here, duplicate. And then you can move that duplicate. This is independent, so you can reposition it, which I think is quite nice. At this point, of course, you can see a problem. You can't see the underline, so let's just go and change this. And you can see you can combine it in different ways. Maybe go with linear burn. I always like doing this sort of thing, and you can then stretch this out and create different angles. I think it creates some very interesting abstract background designs quite quickly. And of course, you can then combine them as well. Though, personally, I always suggest if you do that, I would suggest go down to Merge Visible just to create a visible layer of what you see here. If you select them, for some weird reason, I find that with pattern ones or whatever, quite often they don't always result in what you see here. So it's something that be certainly think about when you actually create maybe a combination of them. But you can see you can create some interesting designs using this approach. Let's just now remove these ones, I'm just delete them. And now what you can do, you can just go here, just go and create just a normal gradient tool. Obviously create a layer, let's just go create a layer, click there, go here, and you've got exactly the same option. Just exactly the same, so bitmap with this, again, so exactly the same file. And now you can see a slight difference though, and <laughs> you can see it straight away where some of the features gone. I'm not certain why they dropped those off. It seems odd why there's no mirror option there. Makes no sense. It would have been a nice addition to have that as well. But you can still go up here, click here, and you've got obviously gradient, swatches, etc. But you've got this bitmap here. Oh, don't know what it wants. Tell me the weather in Maystone at this point. 16, it's very miserable as well. So close, <laughs> yes. Very useful bit of information popping up there. Okay, that is a way of accessing bitmaps very quickly in Affinity Photo. I think you can create some interesting designs. And actually another thing before I go, which I always forget myself, it's quite because of the way they do it. And I wish it would set to the context to be consistent. Now, it's probably gonna prove me wrong on this, but I'm just gonna remove that. Now, if I just go and create something else, let's just create a triangle. Triangle like this. And again, click here, fill. Go over to the gradient, you need to go to the gradient. And you can see now, like that, you get the bitmap in there. So you can see it's in there. But if you want to have it a stroke, you can set it up a stroke as well. Click here and go that down here. It's always a pity you can't click there and actually select an image doesn't do that. You need to go to bitmap and then it will let you select that again. And now, of course, you've got to resize this. You think, oh, great. Well, how do I actually see that? And that is an interesting question because go up here. Make sure you select the move tool. Why? Why, oh, why isn't the stroke width available? Can't understand that. But anyway, you can see as you do that, now you can see that. Let's just remove that because I think that just blocks the way. Make it white. So you can see it. There it is. So you can see that. But now if you go back to the grading tool, it always puts it back to fill. Makes no sense. Should be what you last used it as. It doesn't keep it active. 
just puts it back to fill again. So you always have to remember if you want to manipulate the stroke with your bitmap, and that's like I say another option that you can do. You can see you got it there again, a bit hard to see with the with this, but you can just map map. That's it. That is the triangle. Hard to see. You can see that sharp edge there, just there. That is definitely a triangle. But it's bitmap, and again, if you want to change it, you can just select it there. Not click here, which by for some weird reason always makes me think I should be able to do that. And I always just just go and click it without thinking. And then of course you can only change gradient, etc. What you need is to click the bitmap, and that will bring this up as well. So that is a run through of most of the features of bitmaps. Please put in the comments below if you can actually think of any more options or places where the bitmap can come in. I mean, you probably could use it, obviously you can use it in textures as well. So it's, that file can be useful for more than probably even things like displacement filter, of course, as well. Filters also accept the PNG format, weirdly not PSD either, which is odd. So that is a bitmap fill in Affinity Photo. Hope you found this of interest. Bye.